previewing every game of the English Premier League. Please gamble responsibly. This is the Clubhouse Premier League betting preview with Sportsbet.io. This is Sportsbet.io. You're in the Clubhouse. Welcome along to another weekend uh, preview for the Premier League in England. I'm David Eason, your host today. There it is on the screen. Nice one. Uh, we're looking ahead to the 10. In fact, we've got 11 Premier League games to look forward to uh, this weekend because there's one on Tuesday that sneaks along as well. But we'll uh, get into uh, chatting to both of our guests who are both on the line uh, today. There's Paul Robinson, the former uh, England and Tottenham and Leeds goalkeeper. Hello, Paul. How are you good doing? Good morning. Yeah, good. Thank you. Yourself? Very good, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and on this weekend of weekends, where Spurs take on Liverpool, uh, we're going to have a, a big chat with uh, with Neil Mellor as well, who's going to be talking through uh, this weekend. Liverpool, of course, looking good, looking very good actually. Very good, enjoying it. Hello, lads. All good, all good. There is <laughs> from the Mellor Museum. Uh, we'll get into Spurs Liverpool uh, very very shortly, but let's get into talking about some talking points from this week. Right, let's get into some of the talking points from this week. Um, and I think the, the big one, uh, Paul Robinson, uh, based on what happened in the, uh, the North London derby last week, uh, was not from your former side, but from uh, a goalkeeper that we've been talking about for the last few weeks. And it did seem that the choice of David Raya, is that is that curtains for Ramsdale and goal for Arsenal? Is there any, any way back for him with Mikel Arteta? Listen, it's not necessarily curtains, but as we talked about this last week, his decision has been made. You, know, you can see who his number one is. You play your number two goalkeeper in the League Cup, don't you? And that's exactly what he's done. Um, we, we said about putting him in in a difficult game away at Everton um, rather than a, an easier Champions League berth at home in, in, in midweek. And it's, it's he's nailed his colours to the mast. And, and that's 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 where it is for Ramsdale at the moment, is he's number two goalkeeper. And it's, it's disappointing for him. I've been in that situation. You can understand where he is. It's not a situation he wants. He has to front it up. He has to put a brave face on it. He'll say all the right things in the media. He'll echo Mikel Arteta by saying, we've got two two uh, players for every position. We, we want strength through the squad. I'm looking to fight for my jersey. But secretly inside, he'll be thinking, where can I go in January? I need to get out of here. I need to play football. I wouldn't be surprised to see him going not on a loan in January. Listen, I don't think he'll leave. Um, I think that's too big a transfer to, to be conducted in the in the January window. But it's, it's certainly one that he'll be looking to get out on loan and, and play football matches. He's... He finished midweek before he was dropped to Everton doing the, the press conference and doing the press after the England game, talking about how much he wants to push Jordan Pickford to, to be the country's number one. And then at the, the weekend, he's dropped by his club side. So for him, it's it's not an ideal situation and he's going to want to be playing football. Yeah, Neil, he's, 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 he'll have those Euros next summer very much on his radar, but also he wants, he wants to play for Arsenal. He played so well for them last season. Yeah, he did. Um, manager's made his mind up. You know, Ray comes in, he, he is the number one and it's difficult to understand. Obviously, Paul would understand better because as a goalkeeper, you either play or you don't. Whereas a, a sort of a, a an outfield player, you know you've got a chance maybe of getting back into the team. But it's different as a, as a goalkeeper. You're number one or you're not. So uh, it's a bad season for it to happen for, for Ramsdale because, because of the Euros. And it can cause a little bit of unrest. I don't know who his mates are in that dressing room, but I'm sure it could cause a couple of problems for Arsenal between now and January and, and Ramsdale will be desperate to leave the club and, and try and get some first-team football to try and get the number one shirt for England in the summer, which which I think could be a potential problem, that lack of harmony, that team um, togetherness at Arsenal for a, a few months. Well, they did get a, he got a game in, in, in the League Cup in midweek. We wait and see whether Mikel Arteta has some random kind of managerial instinct that he wants to bring him back in this weekend, but we shall see what the team lineup is. Um, other eye-catching results in the League Cup in midweek um, included Newcastle beating Manchester City, uh, Neil. Um, City, well, there's no quadruple on for them this season, but let, let's think about um, Newcastle and quite good, a good kind of few weeks that they've had from, from the, the draw in Milan to 8-0 last weekend. A, a kind of jittery start to the season seems to be smoothing out and they might be you know getting their flow on again the pressure's eased on the manager hasn't it um <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they had a couple of, uh, of defeats tough games obviously city and liverpool a couple of games brighton as well so uh yeah responded well decent result in the champions league obviously it's a tough group they're in but also the league cup is is a real opportunity they came so close didn't they last season when they lost in the final to manchester united and, and what it would mean to the fans 
to uh, to see them lift a trophy. And that's a really good possibility for them this season. Beating City, who were the favourites, uh, won it many times in recent seasons. So that was a huge result for them. And that will give them a big boost going into this weekend's Premier League game and then the Champions League next week. And they get a draw against, this is a repeat of the final uh, from last season, they get a draw against uh, Manchester United in that uh, in the next round of the League Cup. Um, Newcastle fans' conspiracy theories, because Don Goodman, former Sunderland striker, picked out, they, they say, he picked out their ball, he knew what he was getting. Can I just say, Dave, Paul, have you, have you, have you ever done a draw? Have you ever done a cup draw? You... Yeah, they're not easy, are they? They're not, they're not as easy, easy as they look. Not, you can't, you cannot, cannot blag it. I remember pulling out Liverpool away at Southampton, and my phone was red hot. Everyone's like, "You've got, done Southampton away." I was like, "I've got no idea we were picking out there." <laughs> Liverpool one six one that one, but uh, you've got no idea. So yeah, those people that are saying it's a conspiracy, absolutely clueless. Oh, Never I don't know the slow There's motion no way you could do it, is it? There's absolutely no way you could do it. <laughs> no uh, another winner in midweek um, was Everton away at Aston Villa, and Everton. Paul seem to be getting themselves in gear. And it's all it, we've said it before about Everton. It's all about the strikers getting Calvert Lewin fit. We said it all last season on on this preview, but also with Beto in as well. They've got some strikers. Uh, they're very back to front. They're Sean Dyche, but it's all about results as well, isn't it? It's all about staying in the Premier League for them, isn't it? And like you quite rightly say, the League Cup has has been a a nice break for them. So it's, it puts a run of results together for them rather than just the the odd one or two. It's it's another one uh, to to add to their good run of form, if you like. Like you say, Calvert Lewin, Beto scoring goals, but Jack Harrison's come into the side as well. He's fit. I said to you before, he's I watched him a lot of leads last year. Very creative. He will get a lot of assists, score a lot of goals himself as well. And I think he'll be a big addition to to Everton going forward as well in the final third of the field. I've always said I think they've got far too much to go down. I think they've got far too much to be in trouble. And I think they have they have got that quality that to, to see them through. And in all honesty, we spoke about the the, the, the pre season preview. There is three worst teams in Everton, without a doubt, and I think there's more than three worst teams in Everton, to be honest. And Neil, as a as a striker yourself, you've always mentioned that Dominic Calvert-Lewin possibly being fit, and now now he is. He's he's getting his goals. Um, they they desperately need him, don't they, to, to be fit and firing? And it, it, what, where could they go with it with a, a, a Calvert-Lewin scoring 15, 20 goals this season? I think the League Cup becomes all of a sudden a possibility, you know, to maybe win a trophy. Obviously, the, the big teams have dominated that over recent recent seasons. I saw a stat yesterday, and I couldn't believe it when I heard it actually, because outside the top five, and I'm, I'm taking Tottenham out of the top six. Sorry, Paul. Um, outside the top five teams, only one team has won a domestic trophy in the last ten years. That's the Premier League, the League Cup, the FA Cup. It has been dominated by the top five sides: Liverpool. United, City, Chelsea, Arsenal. And the only team to have won a trophy was Leicester, the Premier League. So, I mean, for Everton, the question was about Everton. Yes, the fans will believe and hope that maybe they could go on a cup run and maybe win a trophy. The last one won in 1995. There's a banner on the cop, in case you weren't aware of that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a long wait for them at staying in the Premier League. But the result against Villa will give them a massive boost going into... What, what may have been described a couple of weeks ago as a relegation six-pointer, but they've had a couple of good results now, so uh, maybe less pressure on Everton for this one. And just, just as a striker, I mean, Calvert-Lewin, with all the injury worries that, that he's had, and we've seen strikers, I mean, that's some of the best strikers when they've, they've had injuries get to them, um, he's got to get that confidence back, and scoring goals will definitely help him, won't he? I think Calvert-Lewin's a 15-goal-a-season, 20-goal-a-season striker if they can keep him fit, and, and some of those goals could be so crucial this season. Whether they can... That, that's another thing, whether they can keep in January if he is firing them in, that's another thing. But yeah, it's a big boost at the moment for Everton to see him back fit because like I say, some of his goals could well prove to be vital in getting some, some big points this season. That's uh, Everton taking on uh, Luton uh, this weekend. We'll get into that and the rest of the games next. The weekend kicks off in the Premier League with Aston Villa versus Brighton as your lunchtime kickoff. Villa 2.57, the draw is 3.8, and Brighton 2.57. Um, Paul Robinson, we'll start with you on this one. Paul Robinson and Neil Mellor going through these games. Um, this this is really on a knife edge. Both of these sides and Brighton can see goals, but they win games. They're both playing in Europe. Where do you judge this game? It should be a good one. Yeah, you're looking at it on paper, it should be a good one. And like you say, it's two teams that are, are trying to great crush the party at the, the, the top of the Premier League at the moment. Um, Villa disappointing result midweek against Everton in the Cup. That's one that they'd have looked to have progressed at, especially after a, a very good win 
away at Stamford Bridge at the weekend. Um, but you know, there's a lot of teams seem to be doing that at the moment, don't they? But these these are two teams that are getting used to European football, getting used to midweek, utilising the squad, and also still trying to finish in a European place in, in the league. Um, two teams that will play open, they'll play expansive. Villa are a little bit tighter than Brighton. As you quite rightly say, Brighton have conceded this season, but they, they do go on and win games like they did last week. The, the two teams that are really good watch, I've watched Villa a couple of times this year, the pace that they've got with the RB and with Watkins up front, they always look dangerous. I mean, I watched them against Palace, they weren't in the game for 80 minutes. And then all of a sudden, something clicked in them and the, the, the forward players came to the forefront. And then they scored goals, both teams have got goals in them. It'll, it'll be a really good game this one to start the weekend off. Yeah, Paul, there's a, a, the, obviously the big Villa Villa Park crowd um, bonus for, for Aston Villa at home against this Brighton side. But Brighton will want to get at Villa at, early on in this one. Villa have looked a little bit shaky at the start of this season, but at times they've looked really good too. They've looked shaky at the start of games as well. They haven't particularly started games well. Um, away from home, they've set up a lot more rigid under an Emery. You see his game plan away from home to, to, to block teams, to, to stop, stop teams getting at them like they did at Stamford Bridge last week. But at home, um, they, they can't play that way. And against Crystal Palace, Palace stopped them. They, they, they played a low block. I can't see Brighton doing that. Palace played a low block against them and they found it very, very difficult to break them down. Palace went 1-0 up and they, they, they held on to the game for a long time until Villa came into it. Um, and at, at Villa Park, they, they, they can score goals. They do get better as the game goes on. But they are slow starters, Villa. So both teams to score in this one, I think it's uh, highly likely. Neil Mellor, uh, nine straight Premier League home wins for Aston Villa is nothing to be sniffed at, is it? Due a defeat, aren't they? Uh, yeah, but they, they, they've been formidable. <laughs> they really have been formidable at home. Obviously, disappointed in the League Cup against Everton. They made five changes. Brighton made nine changes for their cup game against Chelsea. But yeah, really strong at home, Aston Villa. So that makes you think that they'll certainly um, pick, pick something up from this game. Um, I'm looking at Brighton and thinking they'll be disappointed from the defeat against Chelsea. But I don't see Brighton getting beat in this game. I really don't. I feel as though the manager has got such a good thing going on there. They made nine changes to freshness for this game. Uh, Matoma, I've been speaking about Matoma in recent weeks. One goal in 17 Premier League games before the weekend and everyone will be saying, oh, what a player he is. Well, he get one in 17 before that little brace last weekend against Bournemouth. But yeah, I like the look of both teams to score in this one, but I'd definitely be swaying towards a Brighton victory more than a Villa one, even though Villa have been so good at home. Okay, both teams to score and a Brighton victory is 3.4. What are you thinking, Paul? Yeah, I agree with the both teams to score. It'll be tight. Um, Villa just find a way. And like I said, against Crystal Palace, they weren't in the game for long periods, but they found a way. And they've got the players um, in attack with McGinn. Zaniolo looks good as well. By the way, Zaniolo um, started the last few games and he, he's coming to the forefront. He seems to have settled in quickly, playing on that left-hand side. He's got pace, he's very direct and, and he can score goals. Um, I like what Villa do going forward and their home record is always going to be a, a huge advantage to them. But they're playing a very good Brighton team. It, like we say, it'll be a good game. Both teams to score and it's very, very hard to separate the pair of them. It really is. Yeah, uh, Neil, Villa seems to have goals from all over the pitch and they've brought in John Dur Duran as well, who's um, whacking them in from all sorts of angles. It, it, they're a good side to watch, aren't they? Yeah, I think he's more of an impact player off the bench at the moment with Watkins. Watkins got the goal against Chelsea in the Premier League. Last weekend, so I expect Watkins to start, but definitely becomes an option off the bench um, for them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, both teams have goals. That's what you look at and think, yeah, you can see goals in this one. But if you look at Brighton, they create a lot of chances. Villa, not so much so. So I'd definitely be swaying towards the Brighton victory. They have, they've got a terrible record against Villa. I've got it down as one win in 16 against Villa. That needs to change. And what about Ferguson as a goal scorer? Didn't play in the League Cup during the week. Um, he hasn't scored away from home in his last seven Premier League games. He's got four this season, all at home. So I'd be on Ferguson and Brighton victory. OK, you can put that into your bet builder, which is exactly what I'm doing now. Brighton victory, both teams to score. Evan Ferguson as one of those goal scorers is 5.25. Uh, Paul, are you keeping your, your final score under wraps on this one before the scoreline? Well, that's Ferguson falls into the due one category, doesn't he? He looks <laughs> like he's due one. Um, no, listen, I, th I think it'd be tight. I've, I've, I've gone from, for a draw in the predictions, but I, I do think both teams will score. Be creative with the bets. Um, it's difficult because we, we sit here every week and we predict, and we're all guilty of it with our with our hackers, with our bet builders. We all pick a team to win, when quite often there's, there is a lot of draws. Um, the, the, the most common score in the Premier League is 2-1. Uh, if you look over, over recent history, 2-1 um, quite often cashes in. And the draw more often than not, but we're, we're all guilty of putting a win rather than a draw. I'm sitting on the fence with this one, Dave. 
Okay, you can have that score draw and at 3.9. I heard last week Unai Emery still not had a nil-nil as a manager in the Premier League during his Arsenal time or Aston Villa. Um, that's put the kibosh on that one, hasn't it? Uh, it's Aston Villa versus Brighton is the first of our games uh, this weekend. We'll get into a very busy three o'clock schedule. Many a three o'clock uh, this weekend. We start with Bournemouth versus Arsenal. Bournemouth are six, the draw is 4.5, Arsenal 1.52. Uh, Paul Robinson, you the, you have had a, a keen eye on Arsenal last weekend. Um, what are you making of, of the Gunners? Um, Tottenham doing so well to, to get back into that game and to see it out for a point. Arsenal a bit blunt late on, weren't they? They, they, they threatened, but Tottenham did a job on them. I think, been, in all honesty, Arsenal had the better of the game. Um, and from a Tottenham point of view, a point's a great result and delighted with a point. Um, I don't think Arsenal have quite hit top gear yet this year. So I've seen them a couple of times, saw them away at Everton, found it hard to break a, a low block down. They've got the, the attacking players to do it. They've got the attacking quality to do it. I, I think they lack a, a, a number nine, an out-and-out goal scorer. The, the team's full of goals. You look at the players they've got, you look at the quality that they've got, the, the team and the squad is full of goals, but it, there's not one specific out-and-out 25-goal a season, man. I think that's probably the only area that Arsenal do lack. Um, managers made the big decisions, like we spoke about earlier in the clubhouse, about the goalkeeper. And that looks like it's going to be the same. Ray is going to come, come back in this weekend as number one. And they have got squad depth. How they cope with the Champions League and, and the, the weekly fixtures is, is yet to be seen. The test of time over the season. But I, I think there's more to come from them, as much as it pains me to say it. Um, they're, they're a good quality side. Them and Liverpool are going to push City close this year. I don't think either of them will topple City. But I think Arsenal will be there and thereabouts again. I think they've, they've bought very well in the summer. Um, and they've pushed on to the next level where they needed to go to. Neil, uh, looking at, at Bournemouth, can you see anything for them in, in, in this game? It does seem to be, it might be a long season for them, this one. They're, they're playing well in patches, but when they don't play well, they concede lots of goals. Yeah, I think when you look at Bournemouth, you think there's worse teams in the Premier League, but you do think they will be struggling down there. Obviously, at home, they've drawn two of the three games so far. They've only scored one goal. I think that's that's an area where they certainly need to improve on. you thinking, will they score? Maybe against Arsenal. If they do, it'll only be one. Can't see them scoring two. So, so that's going to be. It's a difficult game for them. If they get a point, it is seen as a good result. You know, the bigger games are the the relegation rivals. Um, I agree with Paul in terms. Of, I think Arsenal will be ahead of the rest. I don't see them being as close to City this season, but I still think they'll be top four, which is still going to be a, a decent season for them and, and hopefully do well in Europe in terms of through the group stages. But but they went there and won comfortably last season and I wouldn't be surprised if they did something similar, you know, maybe a, a couple of goals victory. Like Odegaard, if you're looking at a goal scorer, Odegaard's an outstanding player. He's got three this season, three in his last seven away games in the Premier League. So uh, he's a goal scorer that I really like the look of because Arsenal have goals in that team. Uh, Mikel Arteta and uh, Iraola were youth team teammates in a, you know, like a, a boys club uh, back in Spain. Also in that side was Xabi Alonso. So uh, not not a shabby side, that one. Um, not too bad at all. Uh, let's get that, uh, let's see, Odegaard. Where is he in this list? While I'm getting that, Paul Robinson, what do you, how do you think this is going to go? S simple for the Arsenal? Yeah, completely agree with Neil. I think it's uh, the, the way that Arsenal play, the way that Bournemouth play as well. They leave gaps at the back. Um, they will play open. They will they will try and attack Arsenal at home. And, you know, Bournemouth are winless this season. They're winless for a reason. Um, that they, they haven't been good enough. And they're, they're coming up against a good Arsenal side who will be looking to, to get another victory to, to hang on to the coattails of City. There's goals all over the Arsenal side. You know, look at the side now. You know, for Odegaard, Saka, Jesus, Ketia, Gross. It's, this is another one. Arsenal into uh, Eureka for the weekend um, and to, to build a bet. You, you look around cards, you look at the pace that Arsenal have got, you look at Saka, you look at Gross on the wing, whether it's Vieira, whether it's Havertz, then you look at the, the Bournemouth side, Aaron's for a card, Kirkes for a card, the potential with Tavernier, the wing-backs uh, for Bournemouth, always like to back a wing-back against the fast winger to get a yellow card. Did I miss that transfer? Did Gross go from Brighton to Arsenal? Are you thinking of Trossard? Sorry, uh, Trossard. Tross yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, so Trossard. He's laid the trap now. He'll be straight back at you later on. He'll be marking your scores, don't worry. Uh, Odegaard yeah. and Arsenal. Uh, Odegaard any time is 3.3. Uh, let's move on then to uh, Everton against Luton. This is a very 1987 feel about it, uh, as all Luton games tend to do. Uh, but they're at Goodison Park. Uh, Everton getting, getting their first win away of the season at Brentford last week, Neil Mellor. And um, Brentford, as poor as they were, Everton were good for it. Yeah, I think it was a bit of a, a knacker 
uh, coupon buster, wasn't it? Because not many people predicted Everton to get something there with Brentford's good, good home form, but it was a cracking result for them. And they'll take confidence from that. Again, a, a cup, they backed it up with a cup victory as well during the week. At home um, is a place which, obviously, they haven't been great, have they? But this is a team that, this is a relegation rival. It's always a must-not-lose game, but a win is a massive bonus. Luton have really struggled this season. Fancy Everton, not said that too often, but I do fancy Everton to win this game and, and maybe to nil as well. Calvert-Lewin, we mentioned him before, he's, he's in good scoring form. Hasn't scored at Goodison for 11 months, so he was definitely due a goal in one of his home ground. Everton to win to nil is, is one I like for this. That is one of the most due ones that we've had. Uh, they've not won back-to-back uh, Premier League games since, uh, was this weekend? Last season. Um, Paul, can you see anything for Luton here? I think uh, if we'd have had this conversation at the beginning of the last weekend before the weekend that Everton have had, I think we'd be talking about a really tough game for Everton, a relegation rival, found it hard at home, haven't won at home, haven't scored goals. Um, and then all of a sudden they go to Brentford and score three and then they get a great win in, in midweek in the Cup. So it's it's certainly an Everton team that are going to be on a high, they're going to be on an up. And they're playing a Luton team that, as we know, they haven't won and, and they're poor. Um, they're doing everything they possibly can to stay in this league with the resources that they've got. And we say every week, you, you find it hard to make a case for Luton. And I think this time last week, if we were talking about that, get this game, we'd be we'd be making a case for Luton. We'd be saying they're going to go here, we're going to make it hard for Everton. Everton struggle to score, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think you know, seven days is a long time, and it's, and it's completely changed the fortunes of Everton. It, that this 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 puts Everton right right in the driving seat for me at home. Um, with Beto, with Calvert Lewin, and like I said before, Jack Harrison is going to be a huge player for them between now and the end of the season. I fancy Everton to win this one comfortably now after the week they've had. OK, we're looking at Everton, who are strong favourites in the betting on that one. Uh, let's go to Old Trafford, a replay of the game in midweek, which uh, Manchester United won in the League Cup by three goals to nil. Um, Paul, we'll stick with you. 1.58 for United, Palace 5.75. Can it it'll be different teams, obviously different players involved, but can you see a similar result? I don't know if you saw it, Palace were so poor midweek, weren't they? Um, I know they made a lot of changes and I know it's the League Cup, etc., etc. The respect that teams give or don't give to the League Cup. But I was really disappointed with Palace that turned up at Old Trafford. I mean, I actually backed them to beat United um, because of the way United played at Burnley at the weekend. I saw United firsthand for the first time that I'd seen them live this year. Really disappointed. And they were so slow. They were methodical. Everything went through the goalkeeper, the pace of the build-up, everything. It just wasn't the United team that you, you were used to watching. And I'm thinking, I've seen Palace a couple of times, like the look of them this season. I backed them to win at Old Trafford and they were really awful. They, they, you know, they let me down the way that they played. It, and it just wasn't a good watch. Um, United, on the other hand, this weekend, like you say, both teams are going to be hugely changed. It's a Premier League fixture. Um, Palace spoke quite openly about the amount of injuries that they've got. Um, goalkeeper Dean Henderson got injured again at Old Trafford, so that's another one for, for Roy Hodgson's list. I just before the game at the Old Trafford, without realising what injuries Palace had and the way that they played, I could make a, make a case for them. United aren't what they used to be; they're not playing to a level they want to be. But I think this one will be uh, it'll be a home win for United this weekend. Yeah, uh, Neil Miller, what, what do you make of uh, of United this season? I mean, we, we've spoken about everything that's gone on off the pitch and they've had their issues. Amrabat coming in in, in uh, left back in midweek, but you'd imagine he might start in, mid, in midfield this weekend, but they're, they're so stuck at the back. Yeah, it hasn't been a good start, has it, for Manchester United? Uh, they were surprisingly beaten by Brighton at home, but they have been very strong at home. Um, away from home, not so much. A couple of key players back, like say Amrabat, first look of him, left back, uh, whether we'll see him there again or maybe into defensive midfield. Ram was back as well, Mount as well. So all of a sudden, players are getting back fit and key players as well who can certainly make United stronger. Um, don't really fancy Palace. can see it being a similar sort of outcome. Both teams made seven changes in the League Cup. But um, yeah, I think United win this one and, and all of a sudden just give themselves a little bit of a lift after what's been a disappointing run in the Premier League. For Palace, it's they've scored in every away game so far this season, but this could be the one that I don't think they'll score. I think United may get a clean sheet and a win to nil. OK, that's uh, Manchester United versus Crystal Palace. We're whizzing through the three o'clock kickoffs. There's six of them. Uh, let's get uh, a quick break and we'll come back and talk about three more. And we'll continue this part with Newcastle versus Burnley. Newcastle 1.35, Burnley 8.5, the draw is 5.5. Um, Paul Robinson, um, how do you how do you top an 8-0? Paul, oh, that was unexpected as well, wasn't it? I mean, you know, the, the, the difficult time that Newcastle have had. You know, they've got a decent point into Milan in the, in the Champions League. And you look at the results up until that point, they were a bit stop-start, stuttering. 
thought Sheffield United make it really difficult for them. Thought the, the power players behind the ball make it hard for them to break down, and it just didn't happen, did it? Newcastle were good. I mean, eight different scorers as well. Uh, you're not not going to see that in, uh, in many times in the Premier League. It's um, it's a real confidence boost for Newcastle. Obviously, beat Manchester City in the cup in the week as well. Um, that they seem to be uh, just getting back to where where you'd have expected them to. I think because of the way they finished last season, we all expected them to start this season particularly well, and and they haven't done. So then there maybe was a little bit of pressure on Eddie Howe because results weren't what they'd expected and performances, I think, more so. But the the last week or so, like fortunes have changed around for Everton very quickly. They also have for Newcastle a fantastic result with Sheffield United. Neil, what, what do Burnley do here other than continue just to be passing the ball as much as they can? They, they, they just don't <laughs> seem to be getting themselves into a position to, to win games. No, no. I mean, obviously, nearly promoted. Again, this is a game where you're thinking if they get anything from it, it would be seen as a bonus. Um, Newcastle definitely lifted by that. I think the difference is Newcastle can really freshen things up with, with the squad. The front three all changed against Sheffield United uh, and all had a big impact on the game. Even though Newcastle have got a big Champions League game around the corner against Paris Saint-Germain at home, they can still freshen things up. They made 10 changes for that League Cup game, so they're really strong. As for Burnley, you're thinking, well, they can't make that quality of changes. Uh, they, they did win a relatively easy cup game, sold for the way during the week. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this and thinking it's it's a nailed on home victory and it's just a case of, of how many, it's the atmosphere again. There's a real feel good factor at Newcastle, absolutely buzzing. Um, so yeah, I, I don't give uh, Burnley much of a chance for this one, unfortunately. To the side on the other end of that 8-0, um, Sheffield United go to West Ham uh, this week, uh, this weekend, West Ham 1.47. Um, I mean, as much as, you want to give Sheffield United a chance here, Paul. That 1.47 for West Ham is it's, it's one for your Ackers, you might think. But you know, Sheffield United, the Blades have they've been in games all the way through this season. But when you go and lose 8 0, how do you get off the back of that? Well, this is, I don't know. Thankfully, I've never been there. Um, I've, I've had sixes and sevens, but never an eight. Um, it's, it's a difficult one because, like you quite rightly say, they have been in games this season. They've not been outplayed, they've been outpassed, they've been outpositioned. Um, the, you know they haven't created as many chances. I watched them against Manchester City. They hardly had the ball, but they were in the game. They had a game plan. It wasn't like they went into that game thinking they were going to dominate the ball and they wanted the possession. They set up to to realise they didn't. They weren't going to have the ball that game, and that's how they played. Um, you know they've lost two one at Spurs, and they, they were winning that game for ninety minutes. Let's not forget that's a game plan, and that's players that are playing for a manager. I'm personally surprised that Paul Heckingbottom is still in charge. I don't like to see managers getting sacked, but there was talk about his position been under threat before that game, which was wrongly, which is what I thought. And then they go and get beat 8-0. So there's going to be speculation about the manager and, and your next manager being sacked. I don't think you get very good odds on on him, um, especially if they lose this weekend. But, you know, they, they've lost 2-1 against Man City. They've drawn against Everton 2-2. Lost 2-1 against Spurs every game this season. They've been there or thereabouts. And then they go and get pumped 8. It's it, You just don't know what's going to come. It's, it's hard to predict this weekend. Listen, the sensible money goes on West Ham. They go in Yuraka and you build a bet around West Ham, how many and who scores. But Sheffield United, they've, they've got to have a reaction for the manager. And they've shown this season in games that they do play for the manager. So it, it's a hard one to call. The sensible money's on West Ham, but I'm expecting some kind of a reaction from Sheffield United. Quick quiz question, because I know we're speeding through these three o'clockers. This is a nailed on home victory, by the way. Absolutely. Quite like West Ham, Paqueta outstanding at Anfield last week, Bowen. Yeah, hope win for West Ham. But quiz question for you is, the last time this was nil-nil at West Ham, I played... Now, oh. the manager's fault. He put me on the bench. It came on last 20. If it had started... No wonder it was nil-nil. Nil, <laughs> <laughs> if he'd have started, started, would have, if it had started, we would have won. Question is, though, what year was that? What year was that? Oh, how old is Neil Miller? Oh, 1984. <laughs> 2000. <laughs> ah, no, was this before? Uh, 2006? It's a good guess. Seven. Wrong. Four. Two Seven. 2000 and, 2003. Oh, nil, was that was the last 0-0. 16 would have been. It's yeah, not going to be 0-0. Why did he put me on the bench anyway? Yeah, so it's not going to be 0-0. Nil, nil. <laughs> not going to be 0-0. Nil, nil. OK, let's go to the final game. I've got a stat for you. I'm hoping one of you is going to come up with this one. Uh, Wolves against Manchester City. Um, City beaten in midweek. The, the quadruple's off. Um, but Wolves have, have been a thorn in their side. Maybe not recently, Neil, but um, it, it is a tricky place to go. Is it? Um, <laughs> no, not, not, I think Wolves are going to struggle this season. I think it has been a difficult place to go, and I think the home fans will create a decent atmosphere. But 
no, City City get going in terms of a response from that defeat against Newcastle, surprising defeat. Uh, Wolves were beaten by Ipswich. You know, obviously, Ipswich is a Championship side, so they'll be disappointed by that. Yeah, I'm all over City to win this game. And who's your goal scorer? You pick a goal scorer just to enhance the ads. Doku uh, scored in the last away game. He, he didn't score in the last game. I thought he would do. So he's a player who would really like Doku. City to win. Don't give Wolves any chance. Wolves are bigger games are against the relegation rivals. Wolves are going to be a bottom six team, unfortunately, this season. Fans won't like it, um, but they'll create a good atmosphere, but City will be too good. Paul Robinson, City without Rodri, does it have an effect? It does have an effect, but like Neil says, they're playing a Wolves side that are going to struggle this year. Looking at Wolves' recent results, lost to Ipswich, drawn against Luton, lost against Liverpool, lost against Palace. I mean, they're not on a great run of form. I, I tip them at the beginning of the season to be down there and, and one of the favourites to go. And, and I still have that. I think, you know, they haven't added to the squad, to the to the level that they needed to. Um, they brought Gary O'Neill in as a, as a manager who is experienced at avoiding relegation. And that's what he's brought in to do. He's got, he's, he's got his hands full this year. I think they're going to be reliant on other teams being worse than them. And you, you can't back against Man City any week. You look at the team, you know, regardless of who plays for Manchester City. It's it's a banker for City. This it's it's how many and, and who scores. Okay, this question for me: uh, Rodri's missed fourteen Premier League games for Manchester City since he joined. How many have City lost of those fourteen? One. Paul, I reckon probably more. Three. It's four. Four of the fourteen. There you go. We're not... Encouraging news, like Sharp it. Dave. Intake take a breath I... there. We for, for Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> It's the right, maybe the wrong team, but maybe he's missing the next one. He's missing the next one, and we'll see how that goes next week. Uh, this is uh, Clubhouse. Uh, you're with Sportsbet.io. We're going through the Premier League this weekend. It's the Clubhouse preview at Sportsbet.io, and I've got Neil Mellor. I've got Paul Robinson. I've also got Tottenham versus Liverpool. Tottenham two point nine. The draw is for. Liverpool are 2.2. Um, these are two sides playing very good football at, at the minute. Tottenham, the home side, uh, the only side that they haven't beaten at their new stadium, is Liverpool, Paul Robinson. Um, you must be going into this, not exactly bouncing, but certainly confident. Oh, listen, this is the game of the weekend, by without a shadow of a doubt. You know, there's two teams here that are scoring goals, that play good attacking football. I think Liverpool have, have surprised a few. I think even Neil will admit that they're the way they've started this season. People were unsure how they would start after the way they finished last season. Um, they've been a really good watch, Liverpool. They've scored three goals in their last five games, all competitions, you know, in each game. So they're, they're playing good football. Their, their attacking quality is coming to the forefront, which we always knew they had. But another season, under his belt, Gakpo, um, Nunes, Diaz, they're looking like the finished article, Liverpool, up, up the top end of the field. They've still got the Achilles heel that, that they concede too often. But I think they're, they're a lot closer to, to challenging Manchester City again than I think people maybe thought they were this year. Tottenham, it's just a breath of fresh air to watch them. The, the style of football, the way that they're playing under Posta Coglu. Um, open, expansive, attacking football. The worrying thing for me for, the, for this weekend is James Madison picked up a, a knee injury at the Emirates last week, tweaked his knee, which historically he's had a problem with at Leicester. Um, so we've yet to see whether he's going to be fit. Romero's obviously going to be suspended, I think, so the partnership with him and Van der Ven will be broken. Those two things to look at from a Spurs point of view. But honestly, Dave, I'm just looking forward to a really good game of football. Yeah, Neil, it, it really should be a good game. And usually what, Liverpool concede one and go and score three. Three-one three, Liverpool is the score. It's been that way, hasn't it, the last few games? Yeah, I'm looking forward to this game. And yeah, I mean, we knew Liverpool would be improved this season. We weren't sure about Spurs, but certainly there's a real feel-good factor around the football club. They've got a new manager. They've got a lot of new players that have settled in very well. And as Paul mentioned there, the fans are happy. The fans are enjoying watching the team. There's a connection there, which makes it more difficult for Liverpool. Because, Liverpool, because Spurs have started so well. Despite Liverpool having a great record down there, Liverpool do. This is a really tough game. This is a really tough game for Liverpool. Two big away games coming up, Spurs and Brighton. If you told me now four points, I'd probably take it. I know a lot of Liverpool fans would, would want six in the next two, but four points for me would be a really good return. Liverpool had to improve their away form from last season and have done so far. Some good results so far on the road. But this is going to be another tough game. Newcastle away is a tough, tougher game than this one for me. But this is still going to be a really tough game. Just whoever's the most clinical will win this. I'm expecting both teams to score and have plenty of chances. 
Uh, this is, um, yeah, it, it's one of those games. It is a mouth-watching one, and it's uh, one I'm looking forward to be watching in the clubhouse. I'm sure people watching the clubhouse will enjoy me going through this uh, as watching me uh, uh, support my own side while also trying to be, you know, I'll try. I'll try what I'm doing there. Um, Trent Alexander-Arnold seems to be back fit. Uh, Jurgen Klopp has said in his press conference on Friday morning that he is running and training normally. Um, how much of a boost is that, Neil Mellor, for uh, for Liverpool to have to have Trent back? Although they play pretty well without him. Massive. World-class player. Yeah, absolutely. He comes back in. The only other question, Mark, would be whether Canate starts again or not. He played during the week. Liverpool made 10 changes. Curtis Jones ended up playing right back because Liverpool were a little bit short in that area. But I expect it to be the same midfield three of McAllister, Sabozalai, who, who, who looks fantastic, and Curtis Jones. Front three, again, the same seller on the right-hand side, Diaz on the left, Nunes down the middle. So the big question will be whether Canati and Trent come back into the side. The fact that Trent has trained for a couple of days is, is a massive boost. And he knows how to play in these big games. He really does. So uh, if he's ready, I think he comes back into that starting lineup and helps Liverpool um, not that Liverpool need much help going forward, creating chances, but he certainly will do that as well. Paul, what do what does Spurs have to do to uh, to get three points out of this? Uh, you mentioned Liverpool concede goals; they have only kept one clean sheet all season. However, second best defence in the country. Yeah, absolutely, and that's an area that they they, they have improved and they will be looking to continue to be improving on. For, for Tottenham's point of view, they're, they're still work in progress. We can watch Liverpool about Foster Coglu, the way they're playing, the tactics, and everything else. They're a great watch. But let's not forget, a couple of weeks ago, they were losing to Sheffield United at home for 95 minutes of the game. And it was, listen, it was a great turnaround and it was a great feeling after the game. But the performance in that game wasn't one that, you know, that they got last week at the Emirates, which was a, an improved performance. So there is going to be bumps in the road. And, you know, with Trent Alexander-Arnold playing, if he does, in that hybrid midfield role where you'd expect him to play as right back but then tuck into midfield, worry about Spurs maybe getting overpowered a little bit in midfield, like Mel said then about the, the quality that Liverpool have got, Subozlai and McAllister. With the front three that Spurs will play in behind uh, Son, whether that's Madison, um, Kulazewski or Brennan Johnson, I think Liverpool might just have the ability to get behind that and defensively that would leave Spurs exposed without Romero. Both sides, I would so say, would, work, would be susceptible to conceding goals as they proved all season. There's, it's a definite both teams to score this one. But how happy were you last week, Paul, with, with the way that they conceded goals away at Arsenal and yet they just didn't seem, and we've seen this all season, they didn't seem phased. It was like, that we're still in this game and we can still make a mark, and they did. Yeah, it was the character of the team. And that's something that Postacoglu's sides do historically. They, they, they go right to the end of the game. These, these teams have done that at Celtic. They don't accept defeat. They keep going. I mean, it's, it's different in the Scottish League, especially when you, you, you're managing a powerhouse like Celtic in that league. Um, but Tottenham have shown that they've got that spirit. They've got the same togetherness, the same understanding. They did it the week before, like we said, against Sheffield United. And they went to the final whistle at Arsenal and they got the draw. OK, they didn't, didn't have the lion's share of possession. They weren't the better team in that game. But it felt like, from a Tottenham point of view, it felt like a point gained. It felt like a win rather than a draw. And that togetherness, that team spirit, the never-say-die attitude, that's starting to come into the side. OK, let's let's build some bets. I, I've clicked both teams to score. Uh, Neil, wh wh what's your prediction for this one? Heart and head. Yeah, both, both teams to score. Uh, I don't think Liverpool will lose, but certainly could see like a 2-2, a high-scoring draw. Uh, goal scorer wise uh, I think you always have to look at the left-hand side player for the opposition against Liverpool, because Liverpool like to bring the right back into midfield, as we know with Trent. Brennan Johnson could be a good bet for that reason um, and also for Liverpool Nunes is in great form the fans have, have really taken to him he looks hungry he's, he's got the starting shirt at the moment he's got goals in his locker came off the bench the other night nearly scored scored a brilliant goal last weekend against West Ham so I'd be looking at Nunes to uh, to add to his tally so far this season joint leading goal scorer with Mo Salah that could be an interesting battle this season uh, you can have Liverpool or the draw um, with Nunes scoring in a with both teams to score, it's only three point one. I think we think we think goals are going to go in here. Uh, Paul, what's your thinking? Yeah, I like Brennan Johnson. I like that shout. I think he's, he's going to get amongst the goals at some point. Son's always going to be a banker for for goals for Spurs. The way that they're playing, the way he's playing, but you're not going to get value. I always like a little bit of value if you're going to compile a bet. Spurs at home. I think when you put the odds up to start with, there, Dave, it was, they were so close. They were, people are finding it hard to separate these two teams at the moment. There's definitely going to be goals. You, build your bet to get a bit of value. I'd go over two and a half goals, both teams to score and a Brennan Johnson goal. Okay. Is Johnson fit? Is he back fit? Because I know he, he missed last week. But uh, if he if he is, let's see, uh, any time. He scored last week, didn't he, against uh, Arsenal? Yeah, great. Great save. yeah, he started, started last that week. That was his first start. Oh, of course. 
so let's see. Johnson 3.5. Any so at any time with both teams to score. Let's see. Add that selection. Yeah, 3.5. That's your that's your bet builder. Johnson to score any time over two and a half goals. Both teams to score. Um, it's going to be a great one to follow. Uh, although. I hate watching Liverpool away at Spurs for some reason. I don't like, and even though they've not been bad there, um, uh, they. I don't think Spurs have beaten them since. Uh, was it Wembley? A long time, a long time. That was my debut. I made my debut at home against Liverpool, and we drew one all. Oh, there you go. Decent. See, decent. I can name the goal scorer. Can you name the scorer? I can name the scorer. Can Dave first as the Liverpool fan who scored past Paul on the opening day? Uh, what year is this, Paul? Oh four, oh five. It will have been oh four, yeah, two thousand and four, two thousand five season. Was it Neil Meller? <laughs> <laughs> no, go on. I, I'm, it's oh four, oh five. So that's the Champions League squad. So that's Frenchman, um, French, Frenchman really quick. Gibraltar Cisse. Yeah, you're allowed Cisse Gibraltar to score well. against. Him. What was he like, Cisse, as a player? I know he's, he was a crazy, crazy old guy, but are we in record? <laughs> <laughs> we'll move you on tell us there. off there when we're finished <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding I'm only kidding I'm only kidding what's the next Lovely game man. <laughs> nice guy nice guy all nice guys not a bad word to say about anyone uh, so we look forward to uh, Spurs against Liverpool uh, on Sunday evening it's a 5.30 kick off in the UK uh, follow it in the clubhouse with sportsbet.io Sunday's football, there's not much of it. It's almost like there's some big other big sports competition that some TV companies wanted to televise instead, uh, which is exactly what's happened. And that's why we've got uh, Nottingham Forest versus Brentford as our two o'clock kickoff. Uh, Forest 2.75, the draw is 3.2, Brentford 2.75. Good luck to Europe in the Ryder Cup, obviously. Uh, but at the city ground against the Brentford side, Neil, who... Um, they just didn't fire against Everton. It, it, it was called, I think, um, was the worst Brentford Premier League performance by the manager. Well, well they, they haven't started well. Um, we thought they would have started better. They've only won one of the six Premier League games so far. They've got back-to-back -back Premier League defeats. It hasn't happened too often for Brentford because they've been such a good side. Um, and then all of a sudden, all the speculation about how big a Mrs. Tony starts to, to reappear, doesn't it, when we haven't heard it for a... For a while, but yeah, Brentford have certainly not started the season well, and and you're looking at those odds for Forest at home and thinking, quite fancy that. Would fancy Forest to win this game more than Brentford because of Forest's really good home record, and um, don't lose many games at all. A draw would be the the more sensible bet, but if you're trying to pick one, you'd be swaying towards Forest rather than Brentford because they just haven't started the season well at all. And looking at it, thinking, well, how's that going to change? I'm not sure it will this weekend. Paul, you look at that Forest home form, you look at that price, you think, that's a tasty one against this Brentford side. I know it's tough against Brentford, but price-wise, that's pretty good. I think it, it's not tough at the moment. I think for me, Brentford are the surprise package of the season. I was surprised at how poorly they've actually started. Yes, they were unbeaten, but it was draws. They haven't really got going at all, especially at home. I mean, the coupon buster last week against Everton in a really poor Brentford performance. They went up to Newcastle, didn't play particularly well in a really scrappy game that was dotted with free kicks and yellow cards. I just haven't seen Brentford get started this year. And City Ground, obviously, it's a notoriously difficult place to go. They, they built their Premier League survival last season on home wins. And they had a decent performance last week against Manchester City. I know Rodri they went down to 10 men after Rodri got sent off. But they, they didn't go there and they didn't roll over. They, they give a good account of themselves and, and they've won at Stamford Bridge, which obviously teams have, the teams have done this season. I just, I'm just i surprised at, at Brentford's lack of, of quality that they've had going forward. Um, and yeah... I, Forest are the favourites. I'm surprised that Brentford are the, the price they are. The, the, the bookies are finding it hard to separate the two. Yeah, it's five unbeaten at home for Forest. Uh, four of those wins. The draw against Burnley last time out. Um, again, they possibly should have should have taken more. Yeah, it was quite a level game. It was always going to be one one that game. But they got some some good home games coming up. Neil they got Brentford, then they got Luton, uh, then it goes Villa and Brighton and Everton. But uh, as we said last last season, as Paul said, it was all about the home form that kept them up. Yeah, uh, and here's a stat for you. The last 17 games they've played at home in the Premier League, they've only lost to Newcastle 2-1, Man United 2-0. There's been some very big Premier League teams go there and really struggle. So you're looking at it this week and I think it's important that Forest do have a decent home record again this season to, uh, to stay away from trouble. I think when you talk about teams that are going to be in trouble this season, Forest are there, but you think 
they might be the ones that have enough again this season rather than sort of the Luton, Sheffield United that think they're really going to struggle this season. But these are the games where Forrest will think need to get something from. And uh, yeah, certainly do fancy it, the way Brentford have been playing this season and, and Forrest at home. So uh, a draw safer, I must admit. I'm not definitely on a Forest win for this one, but uh, I, I wouldn't be on Brentford to, to win this. Okay, Forest or the draw is, is a short 1.44, uh, Forest a 2.78. Uh, Paul, are you all in on Forest, and uh, can you make that price any bigger? Yeah, fancy Forest. Uh, fancy Forest at home. I'm not going to lie; I don't think I'll be turning off from the golf and watching it. But I'll be uh, sticking with the golf for this one. I don't think it's to be a classic game, um, but I think Forest have got enough at home. A one uh, always good for a goal for Forest. Gibbs White, I thought he's been excellent this season. The pace that they've got, you know, Alanga comes on. They've got Origi who hasn't really started, so they've got goals in that Forest team. So if, if you're going to be creative, Forest to win at home, as you say, the price isn't overly big on them. But it's it's decent. I'd go Forest to win and I want you to score any time. And that is 4.1, which uh, boosts that up very nicely indeed. Uh, that is uh, Nottingham Forest versus Brentford. Uh, our one game, uh, well, the other sport is going on. We'll follow that as well in the clubhouse with sportsbet.io. <laughs> Monday evening then, uh, we're all down West London. It's Fulham versus Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea are 2.05 to go to Fulham, who are 3.6. The draw is 3.5. Uh, we, we say it every week. I just keep saying it. Uh, Chelsea got a win in midweek in the league, uh, which is all a bit crazy. But um, Paul Robinson, starting with you on this one, are they? We we, we know capable. Chelsea are capable of things, but they just are not producing. Stats would suggest that they are creating chances. They're just not putting them away. When will it happen? Or will it? Oh, they're work in progress, aren't they? We, we we hear this every week about transitional period, about a rebuild, about it's going to take time. But the truth is, I'm looking at the league table, Chelsea are 14. And I mean, that's I think they finished 12th last year. It's just not a Chelsea side that we're, we're used to seeing. I've seen them three or four times this year and they've been good at, at times in games, 20 minutes, half an hour. First half away at West Ham, they're excellent. They should have gone in three or four up. Second half, they come out, they're a different side. They're struggling for goals, which is unusual for the amount of quality that they've got, the players that they've got. Um, I think everybody, apart from Chelsea fans, are really enjoying watching Chelsea this season, in all honesty, because of the way that they've scattered and approached it and the money that they've spent. Treatment room's full, as we know, but having spent that much money and having that bigger squad, they have to be doing better. And in fact, with the way that they are, with the confidence levels, where they're, where they're at at the moment, I'm surprised that their favourites going into this game. Neil, if you look at Chelsea's form just in the Premier League, I mean, it's... <laughs> it, it's awful, isn't it? I mean, it, it's, it is almost relegation form over the past, what, 35 games? I think you said it, was, it, was, it is relegation form. But one win since the 6th of May, and that's a 3-0 home win over Luton Town. Yeah, I think a bigger concern is the lack of goals has continued from last season. Uh, we thought that might be addressed, and I'm sure at some point they will get going, but they haven't scored in the last three Premier League games. That's a concern for me. I feel as though the result in midweek, and I know people will say it's only League Cup, they made five changes for it. I think that could be a bit of a turning point for them because Brighton are a decent side, so they'll take confidence from that one. This is a game they would expect to get something from it. I remember last season, I'm sure this was the one where Felix got sent off, didn't he? Was it, was it debut? Certainly yeah, one of his, right. his first games, and, and Fulham ended up winning that one. Um, but I look at that, that maybe turning point midweek in the Cup for Chelsea. They've won a game, and... There's been a lot of performances this season for Chelsea that they haven't been getting the results that perhaps they deserved. But maybe that one could just be the turning point for them and they get another three points. You don't, you still don't fancy Chelsea to go and beat teams 2-3. may do at some point this season to get clicking, but you, they could grind out. So an under 2.5 could be quite an appealing bet for this one. Goal scorer wise I've said it a few times, Enzo Fernandez, 25th Premier League game now for him. Surely he's going to get himself a goal. Premier sure. League goal. Surely. Sure, he's going to get one. Uh, was it two away wins in 16 for Chelsea uh, in the Premier League? Paul, what about Fulham then? Um, we we weren't too sure about them, but actually looking at what they've done at home, oh, there's a lot, lots of goals involved in uh, they're Only 1 0 against uh, Luton last time out, so they've got themselves a win. But we've had um, you know a home 5 3 at the end of last season against Leicester, 2 2 with Palace, a 3 0 home defeat by Brentford, which doesn't look great now looking at Brentford. No, listen, um, Fulham, they are what they are. They're going to be indifferent. They're going to have enough to stay in this league. They're not going to be knocking on the door for the top half finishes. They're going to be a mid-table team who will just do enough to stay in the league. Not because there's worse teams than them, but because they'll, they'll amass enough points and they do what they do. They're a decent club. 
The manager's got a good identity, the way that they play. But again, it's, it's a team that lacks goals. With Mitro, without Mitrovic in that side, Jimenez is not going to get you 20, 25 goals a season. You're looking, uh, Iwobi's coming to the side as well. He's not going to be 20, 25 goals a season. You're looking where the goals are going to come from. But Fulham will turn in enough performances throughout a season where they'll, they'll pick up enough points. Um, like I said, I've, I've, got them, I've got them down to win this one, Dave. I think they've, they've got enough at home um, against the Chelsea team that are really struggling low on confidence. So for me, I think there's a bit of value in Fulham at home. Being, you know, If Chelsea are the favourites, Fulham at home. Both teams struggling to score. So maybe Fulham at home, under two and a half goals and pick a goal scorer. There you go. Well, that is a big prize. Let's do that. F- Fulham at home, under two and a half goals. Uh, go on, pick me a goal scorer then. Go Reed. Let's go Decadora Reed. Uh, let's have a look at these. Am I in the right one? Where is he? Where is he in that list? Go Reed, William, or Pereira. Anyone? Any one of the front three that play behind him and us. Neil, what's your anyone but the striker? And I'll take that. <laughs> anyone but the striker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate. He scores more goals for Mexico than anyone else, but it's uh, yeah. it's it's bizarre, isn't it? Um, let's see. Deco Dover Reed. He's in there somewhere. Surely he's in there. Or Pereira. Pereira in there. Who's the pen taker for Fulham now? Mitrovic has gone. Who's the pen taker? 23 would be Andreas Pereira. Well, that's not bad. There you go. With the under he two play, he's playing in the number 10 role recently as well. Under two and a half goals, Pereira to score on a Fulham win. There's some serious value there. Well, why not? What are you thinking, Neil? Opposite. Opposite. Under 2.5, Chelsea to, to win and goal scorer wise again don't trust the centre forward so I'd pick someone else maybe Enzo for that. He's, like, Enzo, but he's, on pens, he? he's on pens Enzo so maybe a penalty in the game might be a, a good shout on this one as well no I had that there's Enzo anytime oh can't make the odds for that oh come on let's, let's sort this out let's do this properly so you're going Chelsea unders on the goals yeah and Enzo Fernandez. here we go who will score uh oh, this is live Seven. With this mouse. Oh, Seven. Come on. Seven. Where's he gone? Right. My mouse has just Eight. broken, and this is not a thing to do on air. Okay. Uh, Seventeen. 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 So you can oh, have. Yeah. Let's get this properly. Great value. After that. Yeah, there's some value in this game. Uh, I think it, it might be a low-scoring game, but they're usually pretty good games. There you go. Enzo Fernandez under two and a half goals, and a Chelsea win is seventeen. This is where the two sides might split as we go to score lines, um, but we'll work out uh, what that is. Uh, but Fulham against Chelsea is your Monday night football. Uh, hopefully, uh, you've been celebrating a European golf win, but if not, then this doesn't really work. But hopefully, fingers crossed, it is that. A quick look ahead to Luton versus Burnley. We'll see how many people get, get to look get to watch this one uh, postponed because Luton couldn't get their stadium uh, ready in time uh, as we record this we're not sure what Luton and Burnley have done at the weekend so there, there, there's your message for that one uh, 2.9 for Luton Burnley 2.45 the draw is 3.33 it was a championship fixture last season Burnley won 1-0 away at Luton uh, no but uh, the match oh that's, I've got my was it Burnley 0-0 I'm looking at James the producer here was it 0-0 last year um, at Kenilworth Road uh, under two and a half goals has landed in each of the last five head-to-heads. I'm really, really selling this one. One line from each of you on this one. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> yeah, you're really selling it, aren't you? On a Tuesday night, if I've got other plans, I'm not staying in to watch that after you've just the sold The Champions that. League's on. Um, <laughs> listen, Luton have got to get points, haven't they? We, we, we say it every week, we find it hard to make a case for him. If they have got any type of hope of staying in this league, which realistically they haven't at the moment, They've got to beat teams like Burnley. Burnley are struggling to, to, to get anything out of the, the season. Seen them a few times, Burnley. Um, they're struggling to adapt last season's style into the Premier League, conceding too many goals, and at the moment seemingly not good enough in games. And Luton, exactly the same. We've, we've got two teams here who are fighting relegation. It's, if anyone can take three points in this game, it'll be massive for whoever does. But I, I suspect it will only be fans of Luton Town and Burnley that are watching this one. It's unfortunate for them. This isn't even on telly in the UK, so uh, they'll have to follow it on Twitter or whatever they call it these days. Neil, um, Burn, uh, Burnley, we mentioned Burnley in, in, the, in the Saturday preview. I, I do worry about a side that, that's got these values of having to pass the ball all the time and having a big gap up front. There's no there's no striker, is there? No, no, but um, that's their identity. I think they're comfortable with that. I look at Luton and I think fancy 
Burnley to pick up more points this season. Um, what you would say about Luton is, though, they got a point against Wolves at home. They took it really close with West Ham at home as well. And as we saw with Forest last season, the importance the home form can be. So they need to be starting to pick up more points at home, try and get that first win. And I look at I look at the bottom six teams in the Premier League and think they're your big games this season. And this is a massive game for Luton. It really is. They've just played Everton before this game. Don't know how the result would have been. But if they got something there, I don't think they would have done. That would give them a, a bit of a lift for this one. I think a draw isn't a bad result for either, but a win is absolutely massive. So uh, whilst it's early in the season, these are rivals for, to stay in the Premier League. So it's almost like a mustn't lose game, but a win would be a massive one. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking unders on the goals. Uh, we will be following this in the clubhouse with sportsbet.io, but it, it is also a Champions League night. And we'll be looking at that one as well. So if, we'll keep you across this one. Uh, that is uh, Luton versus Burnley. Who knows? It might be an absolute goal fest, in which case I'll have to apologise next week. Uh, we'll see uh, what the guys think of it when we get to these score predictions, which are coming up right now. So the score predictions. Uh, James, put the put the scores up from last week. Have you got them there? Who? Oh, okay. Won. Who won? Neil Here won. we go. Neil won 10-8. And it all turned around on Liverpool 3, West Ham 1, as you can see there. No one got the nil 8. Funny that. Uh, well, that did secure the victory. You know, I, it's, it's in, I, can see, I can see Neil mouthing his, his displeasure there. But anyway, Neil, Neil did win that. Uh, let's, get, let's get back to them. Get them back on screen, James. Um, so, this week, I, I, I see Paul's just shaking his head. Still haven't lost on green ticks. Is that silly rule for three points? Still haven't <laughs> lost on the amount of green ticks. Everyone a winner. You see, I mean, there's a lot of green ticks there. And that, that's where, if we're following these, if you're following them, dear viewer, um, you're doing all right by either of these. Um, so let's go straight into this weekend. Then we'll start with Villa against Brighton. Uh, Paul Robinson, we'll start with you. Two good teams. Difficult to, to separate these two teams. Uh, there's goals in both, but I think it'll be an evenly matched game. I've gone for one all. One all. Neil, what are you thinking? Yeah, Villa really strong at home, aren't they? Uh, really impressive uh, winning run at the moment. Brighton are a really good side. Brighton are a better side than Villa for me. I think Brighton get the win. 3-1. OK, into the many three o'clocks. We'll start with Bournemouth. Arsenal, Neil. Yeah, routine win. Like last season. Going to go for 2-0 away win. Just the two, Paul? Completely agree. I'll go different. I'll go three. OK, three for Arsenal. Uh, staying with you, Paul, at Goodison Park, Everton against Luton. Well, like we said in the previews, if we were having this conversation 10 days ago about Everton, we'd be talking about a close game. I think Everton's fortune, fortunes have turned around. They were good in the week in the League Cup. Fantastic win against Brentford. Toffees to get off the board at home, 2-0. 2-0 to the Blues, Neil Mellor. We've got exactly the same score. And Everton fans are going to see the first home goal this season, 2-0. Lucky Blues, uh, staying with new Neil Mellor for Manchester United Crystal Palace. A repeat of midweek? Yeah, a repeat of midweek. A repeat scoreline in midweek. Yeah, I think it's going to be a comfortable home victory. I'm going 3-0. That would be a, a nice a nice round number again, similar to that. But are you, are you going similar to that one, Paul? Not as comfortable for United. Saw them at Burnley last weekend. Wasn't convinced by them yet. I think Palace have got more when they change the team up. 2-1 um, United. OK, talking of Burnley, your odds I go to Newcastle. What are you thinking, Paul Robinson? Uh, again, if we talked 10 days ago about Newcastle, we'd, we'd be maybe having a different conversation. Stuck eight past Sheffield United last week. Very difficult to back against Newcastle at home against anybody this season. I think it'd be comfortable for them against the Burnley side that are struggling. 3-0. 3-0, Newcastle. Do you agree, Neil, or one eye on PSG? Maybe you take their eye off this one. I think they're rotating the squad well, aren't they? Obviously, a big win against City in midweek. Uh, rotated the front three again. They may do it again this weekend before PSG. But, yeah, I think they'll have too much for Burnley. 3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Three, one. OK, sticking, to, sticking with Neil Mellor on his old side. West Ham against Sheffield United. Yeah, Any good nil? side. Really good side. I'm going for a home win here. I don't think Sheffield United will be beating as heavily, but, but still beating. And goals, not convinced they'll get many. So, 2-0, uh, home win. 2-0 to West Ham. Uh, Paul, will uh, will Mikel Antonio uh, get over the, the ignominy of, of what he said last week and didn't do at Anfield? Yeah, and I think Sheffield United will be looking for a reaction as well um, after last week's devastating defeat, 8-0. Uh, I think they'll, they'll, they'll get on the score sheet, but I think they struggle at West Ham. I've gone 3-1 West Ham. 3-1 West Ham. Uh, 
We mentioned in the preview, uh, Rod Rodri not being in the Man City side could cause them trouble. Will it, Paul? Will they Will they go and lose at Wolves? No. No. I mean, Rodri, Rodri aside, I mean, you look at the quality they've got. This is a routine win for City. It's, it's how many? It's, I've got them down 4 0 winners. 4 0. Neil, what are you thinking? Yeah, they've been beaten 3 1 and 4 1 at home. I'm going to go for 3 0 at home. 3 0 to City. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to the t- the two of you now. Okay, head to head, Tottenham and Liverpool. Uh, we'll start with you, Neil Miller. What's the score going to be here? Probably going to go for the. It's going to be tough for both teams. I think both teams will score. Could definitely see it being a score draw, but I'm going to go with a popular scoreline for Liverpool. What's it been the last four games? Liverpool have scored three. The opposition have scored one. So I'm going to go for the same three one. 3-1 Liverpool. Paul Robinson. Same amount of goals, just evenly shared, like the North London derby last week. 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two is the prediction. To Sunday, Nottingham Forest, Brentford, Paul. Forest too strong at home. Brentford really struggling this season. Um, they'll, they'll be huffing and puffing to try and get something Brentford, but I haven't been impressed with them. 2-1 Forest. 2-1 Forest, Neil. Yeah, Forest good at home. Don't see them losing, but I think Brentford might nick a point. 1-1. One, one. 1-1. One, one. And then uh, the final game of this match week is Fulham versus Chelsea, Neil. I've gone for a, not many goals in the game, but Chelsea to build on that midweek League Cup win. A 1-0 away win. 1-0 to Chelsea, Paul. 2-1 Fulham. That could be that could be the thing that divides that could be the, the match that divides these two this week. Or will it be? Luton Burnley, all eyes on this one on Tuesday night. Uh we're going to include it. I'm not going to double point it. I was going to. I was going to play a joker and double point it because it's. It's. If it was not this dull, I might do. But it's quite dull. What's it going to be, Paul? <laughs> dull. Dull. <laughs> and it's not going to be a classic. Um, I can't see either team wanting to lose this, and simply because of that, I'm going to go for a one-all draw. A one-all draw. Uh, Burnley pretty much went everywhere last season and, and annihilated teams, but didn't go to Luton and do it. Neil, what are you thinking? I think it will be Klaus. It may not be a classic, but I do think it'll be a Klaus game. Uh, I think draws the obvious one, but I think Burnley will nick it. 1-0. One 1-0 nil. One nil to Burnley. That completes uh, this match week uh, of scorelines. Uh, and yeah, thank you for your, all your predictions this week. Uh, we will look forward to the WhatsApp chat over the weekend and into Tuesday when I want to keep an eye on that game between Luton and Burnley uh, when, you know, the Real Madrid are playing. But wh- why not? We'll try and we'll, we'll, we'll get the stream up of Luton against Burnley. Um, Good stuff. Thank you for all your help this week uh, and uh, good luck for both sides. May the best side win between Liverpool and Spurs this week, Neil and Paul. Thank you. Cheers, Dave. Have a good weekend. Uh, BeGambleAware.org is the place to go. Please always gamble responsibly. This has been a sports broadcast media production uh, for sportsbet.io. Follow all these games in the clubhouse and we'll see you next week. Previewing every game of the English Premier League. Please gamble responsibly. This is the Clubhouse Premier League Betting Preview with Sportsbet.io.